Imagine a shackle so big, it makes your average padlock look tiny. The giant bow shackle is built to do the most extreme job on Earth, like securing an oil tanker to a dock, and the process behind manufacturing one is extensive. A shackle like this isn't an ordinary shackle you find in a hardware store. It has to be made. The ends of the shackle are forged. The first thing to do when making a shackle like this is to forge the ends of it. We start off by choosing the right material, and once that's done, a process called hot upsetting starts. Hot upset forging is a metalworking process used to shape a metal into the desired form. But before that, the metal has to be heated to a degree where it starts glowing due to its temperature and can be molded. In that state, the metal is easier to work with. This heated metal is then hammered by a huge machine press to form what's called the initial billet. This billet is a bar-like structure which acts as the starting point for the whole manufacturing process. Then the die preparation starts. Dies are those molds or tools that are used to shape the heated metal into the desired form, and in this case, the die is used to shape the metal into a bow-like structure. To give it a better shape, it has to be hammered to deform and shape the metal, to squeeze or force the metal into the shape of a die. The most attention is given to the ends of the metal to not only form the bow, but also form the pin or bolt holes. To achieve maximum accuracy, this process may be repeated several times before the manufacturer moves on to the next stage. But before the shackle can be moved into the next stage, it has to be cooled in a controlled way to avoid any kind of internal stress to it. Machining the shackle Before going into the next stage, which is the machining stage, the newly forged shackle has to be inspected very carefully to make sure they meet the necessary industry standards. This may include checking dimensions, identifying any defects, and verifying the material composition. If the metal is up to the mark, the factory workers give them the green light, and it undergoes a cutting phase. Because the shackle is still carrying some excess material or flash from the forging process that needs to be removed, the excess is removed through many ways, which includes sawing or shearing to trim it. The shackle has to include a bolt or a pin to close the outer end. In order to add the holes to the bolt of the bow, a machining process takes place, where holes are drilled at the end of the bow with a certain diameter. During the machining phase, holes are drilled into the bow that tend to have rough edges. These edges have to be polished to keep the surface smooth by removing those rough edges which gives the shackle a much smoother appearance. Quenching and tempering Quenching and tempering are processes of heat treatment commonly used to enhance the mechanical properties of the metal. This process is important for the metal to achieve the desired combination of hardness, strength, and toughness. Quenching is done by rapidly cooling the heated shackle from the forging or casting process by exposing it to some kind of quenching medium like oil, water, or polymer to rapidly cool the shackle. What this rapid cooling does is that it freezes the atomic structure of the steel, resulting in a hard and brittle state. Quenching contributes to the hardness of the shackle, making it resistant to wear and tear. However, the high hardness achieved through quenching also makes the steel brittle, which is why another process called tempering is also important. After quenching, the shackle is heated again to a lower temperature in a process known as tempering. The temperature the shackle is brought down to is below the critical point reached during quenching. The temperature of the shackle is maintained at this temperature over a period of time before it's allowed to reach its desired temperature naturally. While tempering does reduce the hardness obtained from quenching, it improves the toughness and ductility of the shackle. The process also helps relieve internal stresses that may have developed during quenching. As a result, what we get is a shackle that is a balanced combination of strength, toughness, and resilience. What both of these processes have in common is that they both require precise control of temperature and time to achieve the desired mechanical properties. The specific temperatures and durations depend on the alloy composition, the size and shape of the shackles, and the desired final properties. Even during the process of quenching and tempering, quality control measures are implemented to make sure the shackle is of the best quality by carrying out hardness tests and inspecting the shackles for any signs of defects. After that, the shackles go through a final inspection phase to make sure they meet the specified hardness, strength, and toughness requirements. 
This comprehensive inspection makes sure that the shackles are suitable for their intended use and comply with the industry standards. Even though the body of the shackle has been made, it still has to go through another phase for aesthetic purposes. The shackle gets painted. Painting the shackle with specific colors does give the shackle a better look, but it also has a purpose. The color of the shackle is kind of a safety feature, because the color helps people identify the position of the shackle. Before it can be painted, however, the shackle is inspected, and it is made sure that the shackle surface is clean and free from other contaminants like oil, grease, or rust. Surface preparation may involve cleaning, and if necessary, sanding or priming the surface to promote good adhesion of the paint. Choosing the right paint is also as important as making sure the surface is nice and clean. Only quality paint is used, making sure it provides good adhesion and durability that are resistant to corrosion and weathering, especially if the shackles will be used in outdoor or harsh environments. In many cases, the bow part of the shackle itself is colored silver, while the pin is colored yellow. Shackles are usually color-coded to identify each part quickly, which can be particularly useful when it comes to working in an environment where different shackle sizes or load capacities are required. The paint can be applied by any suitable method, like spraying, brushing, or dipping. It all depends on the size and design of the shackles. Once the paint is applied, it is left to dry over a period of time after, which quality control checks are conducted to make sure that the color coding is consistent and that the paint adheres well to the shackle surfaces. Adding the safety bolt. A bow shackle isn't complete without the safety bolt with a nut and cutter pin to enhance the safety and security of the shackles, especially in situations where the load is critical or where the shackle is subject to dynamic forces. This makes sure that the shackle remains securely fastened. The safety bolt is actually the bolt that is passed through the ears of the shackle to secure the pin in place. It's more like a secondary fastening mechanism so that the shackle doesn't accidentally open when being used. This safety bolt comes with a nut that threads into the end of the bolt. As the nut tightens against the shackle ears, the safety bolt solidifies its place in there securely. Once the nut is securely tightened in its place, a cutter pin is inserted through a hole in the safety bolt's threaded end, after which the cutter pin is bent to stop it from coming out later. The role of the cutter pin is to act as a visual indication of whether or not a safety bolt is secured properly. And with that, the giant bow shackle is ready to be packaged and shipped. What do you think about the process of making giant bow shackles? Let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed today's video, then make sure to leave a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to always be updated with the most exciting content as soon as it's uploaded. Thanks for watching. See you again soon in another video.